In the last three videos I've done on audio transformers, we've looked at the impact of various isolation and splitting transfers, mic and line level, from various manufacturers upon an assortment of microphones, dynamic and condensers. And we saw that the different transformers affected the frequency response of the microphones in differing ways. Anything from boosting low end, reducing overall level, boosting highs, cutting highs, um, of various assortment of impacts just by having the transformers in line with the microphones, not even looking at the signal going through the transformer, although that is affected as well, just attaching a transformer to the line. And we looked at that versus hardwire splits, um, where we did not see all those impacts. Now, transformers are very useful for several things. One, uh, changing the voltage to current ratio, going from high impedance to low impedance, or low impedance to high impedance, attenuating signal voltage, um, like a DI box would do. Also, they're good for blocking phantom power. Now, phantom power can be blocked in several ways. The other way to block phantom power that's common is using capacitors. So we'll take a look at that today. I've got smart set up here and I've got some signals. And if I unplug this, we will see on the smart screen that um, the signal has dropped away. And this will be where I plug in the various units to look at. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is the flat line here, which is the direct pass through signal. So I'm going to go ahead and capture that. Now we'll put in the radio twin ISO and take a look at that. And we can see that we have a drop in level. Now I've got this set so that it's plus one minus two. This scale of magnitude is three dB. So we're seeing about less than one dB, maybe um, half a dB or two thirds of a dB of drop. Oh, we can see what it is. We're seeing 0 0.59, 0 0.6 dB of drop across the line. So we have some loss going through it. And we can see our phase shift that has happened here, a slight rise. This is plus or minus five degrees in the phase. So we see maybe a degree f um, off in the top and bottom end. If we take this and plug it into a console as if we had another split, we can see the impact of that. And we can see that we lose um, more level. We're now down to one dB down and our phase shift has changed slightly. We can go ahead and save that. All right, so there's the twin ISO. We can see that it does impact it. We see some level drop in there. Let's go ahead and look at the radial JS3. Now this is a mic level, not a line level transformer. So when we plug this in, we'll see what happens there. And we have, and it's also a splitter instead of just an ISO, it's a split. So it's got some more, um, it's got an extra output. And we can see that we've dropped even further. And we can compare that to not loaded down, loaded down. We can see the phase is shifting. I'll go ahead and save that capture. Let's take a look at the next one. This is a Whirlwind ISO 2. And we'll look at this loaded down first. When I say loaded down, I've got it plugged into this um, little um, inexpensive mixer there just to add another preamp to it. So if we were doing a split out of it or it's going to more than one thing. And we can see that we have an interesting rising frequency response in the high frequency. And uh, we've got that instability in the low end and we've got our phase shift. It's kind of bouncing around. Um, let's go ahead and save that capture. I'll call that a WW. And next let's go to uh, the Cinemag, little mic level transformer. Oh, we see a slight rising response here in the high end. Let's unload it. Look at that. We see quite the difference. And we'll save that. All right. Uh, let's do something a little different. Let's go ahead and look at the capacitor. Um, DC blocking capacitors. Now, this is not an isolation 
but it is a way of blocking DC or blocking phantom power. A lot of times we'll use transformers to block phantom power. It's one of the ways to do it. Is a transformer the best way to block phantom power or is it preferable to use capacitors to do so? Um, we can take a look. So I'm going to go into the capacitors. And this, you know, we, there's capacitors on the front end of most mixing board mic preamps and stuff to block DC. So audio signal goes through a lot of them in the signal chain. All right, so we can see this green line here, very little loss. Uh, we can go ahead and mute all these other ones from direct on down and take a look just at. There's the capacitor. Let's turn the direct on and we can see the capacitor versus direct. Let's go ahead and load these down and see what happens. And we see a increase in the phase shift in the low end, no change in the highs, and we see the low end rolling off 0.26 dB. Uh, very subtle, uh, less than the drops. We'll go ahead and save that. For the next thing we'll do is we'll take a look at blocking phantom power. So what I'll do is turn phantom power on, on the uh, channel one output here. And we can see that there, and that's going through the caps. We can look to see that phantom power is here using the XLR sniffer sender. And it should light up. And it does, it's green. Um, and then we can look at the other side coming out of the capacitors and we can see that there is no phantom on this side of the capacitor. So they are blocking the phantom and we can do a quick check of that with a transformer. Uh, let's grab the twin ISO and we can see that uh, the phantom power is still live here. I haven't changed that. And we can look at the other side of the twin ISO and see that uh, the phantom power does not pass through it. Um, so it does have the ability to block phantom power. Oh, let's check high levels and um, we'll be done. So now what I want to do is I'm going to run into the line level inputs of Smart I.O. And by using the line levels, we can avoid overloading these. We can turn phantom power off because it won't be doing anything. And we'll bring our pink noise up to zero dB. All right. And let's get rid of all these curves. There's our flat line reference, which should be the same as direct. I don't need to re-grab that even though it's new. And um, I'll leave that one up. Let's go into the radio and drive it hard. See what happens. So there's the radio twin ISO. Um, run at line level and let's load it down. And we can see that we lose uh, about 0.6 dB. Let's look at the other ones. This is a line level unit with line level signal. Here's a whirlwind ISO 2. Give that a shot. And same, similar as we saw before the whirlwind here, we can look at that. Um, loaded down, not loaded down, and the line level. And the levels are a little different here because of the um, different inputs, but the response is not changing much. And now let's see what happens if we run line level into a mic level unit. So now I'm gonna go into the JS3 And here we see that the trace will not stabilize. It is all over. It's moving around. And that's because the transformer is saturating and distorting. And um, it doesn't have um, that we're seeing the distortion. We can do uh, one more and then we'll wrap it up. Let's see what happens with a capacitor driving at line level. And here, loaded and not loaded. Not loaded down, we're razor flat all the way down. And then when I plug it in and load it down a little bit, we still are razor flat. We're down 0.1 dB. 
2 dB and we've got a phase shift of 4.5 degrees in the low end. Um, so for high level signals, the capacitors are impervious. The transformers have a maximum volume that they can handle. The capacitors have a maximum voltage they can handle, but as long as they are within that voltage spec, these are 100 volt caps, which are well over anything we could send to them from uh, XLR signal. We don't want to run line level signals into mic level transformers. They saturate. And in another video, I can uh, we can go ahead and listen to what that distortion sounds like. Um, it kind of sounds like the thumpity thump of um, a car coming by with too much low end. The different line level transformers have differing frequency responses. Now this is set to a very high level of precision. It's plus one and minus two dB. So this is all within a three dB window. It's not big differences, but they are there. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at transformers at different levels, as well as different loadings, as well as capacitors for DC blocking and found this interesting.